Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Affordable Flyers, Sonic's high-wing prototype has first engine start, RV916 may prove to be a solid alternative, Volt Aero unveils HPU 210 hybrid electric powertrain. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to Airborne Affordable Flyers, our programming designed to help you get and stay in aviation as affordably as possible. Overseen by the editorial staff of the award-winning Sport Plane Resource Guide, we know well the challenges faced by today's sport flyers, and we're here to help you enjoy flying to the utmost. Let's get into today's stories. Sonic's high-wing prototype has first engine start. Sonic's aircraft announced that its high-wing prototype aircraft has had its first engine start, which fired up with no issues, and it also successfully completed its first taxi and brake tests. Sonic said the aircraft had a short task list yet to complete before first flight, which it hopes to achieve before Oshkosh this summer. The company is eagerly awaiting the aircraft registration to be returned by the FAA and final inspection. The aircraft is powered by a Belgian 130-horsepower UL Power UL350IS engine. Its four-cylinder horizontally opposed four-stroke UL350i engine modified to a higher compression ratio and runs on Avgas or Mogas 9798. Sonex reported that since early April, the company had completed tooling on the windshield and successfully formed a good windshield from minimal waste. The process isn't completely finalized yet, but the team is optimistic it can be perfected very soon. The final skinning of the wing and installation of the outboard wing panels were completed in May, as were the construction and installation of the ailerons and flaps. Currently in process are the fairings for the metal flap roots. The machined door hinges fit perfectly and the doors are now complete with an inexpensive handle for the release, instead of the original idea of a lanyard-style release. After the break, racers gear up for the 48th annual Women's Air Race Classic. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Racers gear up for the 48th annual Women's Air Race Classic. More than 100 female pilots from across the U.S. are gearing up for a 2,426-mile, nine-state journey as part of the 48th annual Air Race Classic. The fun officially begins in Fairhope, Alabama on June 17th. The race tradition started 96 years ago with the Women's Air Derby, hosted in 1929 under the 1929 National Air Races. Back then, a group of 20 women came together at Clover Field in Santa Monica, California, for what would be a nine-day race to Cleveland, Ohio. Sensenex celebrates 100,000 composite prop blades. Sensenex took a company-wide day off on June 6 to celebrate a major milestone the production of its 100,000th composite propeller blade. The manufacturer began venturing into composites, expanding from its already wide collection of wood and metal designs in the late 90s. The company wrote on Facebook, quote, We hit a milestone a few weeks back with the production of composite blade serial number 100,000, and in an appreciation to the team, we are taking a day off for a company offshore fishing trip, end quote. California judge shoots down premature GAMI G100 UL motion. A California Superior Court judge recently ruled that GAMI's unleaded avgas does not meet the legal definition of commercially available, meaning fixed-base operators and distributors in the state are not required to stock or sell it, particularly not in place of 100 LL. The decision follows a motion by the Center for Environmental Health seeking to enforce a 2014 consent judgment requiring fuel sellers to offer a lower lead alternative when one becomes widely available. Aero TV Quicksilver Ultralights are still flying high. 
Don't miss a recent Aero TV feature about the current state of the Quicksilver industry. In the half century since the first generation of Quicksilver aircraft took to the skies, the design has kept the unwavering attention of the experimental and ultralight aviation communities. The Quicksilver product line is now sold and serviced by AirTech Inc. in Reserve, Louisiana. The product line has changed over time, but the company's dedication to its past has not. AirTech offers support for every Quicksilver model. Catch the full feature on our YouTube channel. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. RV916 may prove to be solid alternative. An intriguing idea, oft talked about in various circles, is now a reality as Lockwood Aviation has installed, tested, and is preparing production of Rotax 916 IS installation for Vans RV9, with other RVs doubtlessly waiting in the queue. The published numbers are incredibly impressive, and Phil Lockwood is not a guy to exaggerate, boasting a cruise climb at 120 knots indicated airspeed of 800 plus feet per minute in eco mode, burning 8.5 to 8.8 GPH. Reported speeds range from 190 knots at 8.5 GPH to 150 knots at 4.5 GPH at the same density altitude. Lower, Lockwood reports 160 knots at 8.8 GPH. Lockwood is prepping a full firewall forward installation package that includes a Rotax 916IS with 5-year, 2,000-hour warranty, an engine mount for stock RV9 firewall, MT3 blade constant speed hydraulic prop with spinner, hydraulic prop governor, liquid cooler, oil cooler and air-to-air -air intercooler, all hoses, custom engine cowling, complete exhaust system, all hardware, dual electric fuel pumps, and all internal baffling. We haven't yet gotten a firm answer on pricing, though we've heard 80 k has been bandied about, and the overall package reveals an RV with a long snout, clean lines, and far better economics and performance than we've seen from this breed. It's an altogether intriguing project. More info to come. After these messages, Bolt Arrow unveils HPU 210 Hybrid Electric Powertrain. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com DirectFly USA proudly introduces the new Alto NG, a single-engine, two-seat light sport aircraft for the North American market. This simple, all-metal aircraft design provides low-maintenance cost, easy, comfortable access, and responsive flight controls. Equipped with a Rotax 912 engine and a ballistic parachute, the Alto NG is reliable and safe. Learn more about the Alto NG at directflyusa.com. Welcome back. Volt Aero unveils HPU 210 Hybrid Electric Powertrain. We're not sure about its affordability, but it may have a future in sport aviation. Volt Aero launched its HPU 210 aircraft powertrain, making the patented hybrid electric propulsion available to propeller-driven aircraft in the home-built, kit-built, and very light aircraft categories. The company displayed its HPU 210 hybrid power unit for the first time at its exhibit at the France Air Expo in Lyon. The unit combines a high-performance thermal engine with an advanced electric motor to provide push-to-climb functionality with 40% more power, enabling more efficient, safer, and enhanced flight ops. Jean Boti, CEO and Chief Technology Officer for Volt Aero, said, quote, With the HPU-210, a new category of airplanes will benefit from the patented, proven hybrid propulsion tech pioneered by Volt Aero for our Casio family of regional aircraft, which are now advancing into their pre-production phase. We validated our hybrid propulsion architecture on our in-house Casio S flying testbed, which has logged more than 185 flight hours and flown approximately 25,000 kilometers in a full range of operating conditions." End quote. The HPU-210 is equipped with the Kawasaki H2SX thermal engine that provides a maximum power output of 150 kilowatts, along with a 60 kilowatt electric motor. The H2SX is derived from its use on Kawasaki's Ninja H2SX sport motorcycle and using its high-performance four-cylinder inline engine with fuel injection. It has an estimated TPO of 1,500 hours. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.